I'm Pastor Charles Price. This is my wife, Pamela Price. We'd like to thank you for joining us here in Living Epistle Facebook Live. On tonight, we're going to pick up where we left off last time in the book of 1 Peter. We're going to start at the third chapter, but before we get into the word, we'd like to open up with prayer. So if you will, wherever you are, just bow your heads with us in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, as we come before you here and now, we thank you, God, for this time. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to come before these people, God, to share your gospel, your good news. Father, I ask that you would open up our hearts, open up our minds, help us understand and comprehend what you're sharing with us on tonight through your word. And God, we give your name, the praise, the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. This, is my Bible, this is my Bible, the Holy Word of God. Holy word of God. It is my food, is my food? Water, water, light, light. Strength, strength and final authority, and final authority. Through, it, through it i've been redeemed, I've been redeemed and, reconciled and reconciled unto god now yeah. as i hear the word of god, word faith, of god. Will faith will come through faith, through faith. Through faith. Salvation, is salvation is mine through faith, through faith. healing is mine healing. Through, faith. through faith deliverance <clears throat> is mine <clears throat> through faith <throat> prosperity <throat> is mine prosperity. all of god's blessings all of god's blessings all of god's blessings, all of god's blessings all of god's are mine all right then Again, like I said, we are going to begin in the third chapter of 1 Peter. We finished up last week the uh, second chapter of 1 Peter, but we're going to pick it up in the third chapter. But before we get into the third chapter, it, it, we must kind of go back a little bit uh, in that second chapter. Now, on tonight, or you know, usually I'm using my King James Version, but on tonight I'm going to be using my Tony Evans uh, CSB uh, Study Bible, which is Christian Standard uh, Bible. I'm going to be using that because I used it today in studying and preparing for tonight's lesson. So uh, I was able to gain some things. And, and also with that said, this is what I'm going to use on tonight. But I will maybe from time to time go back and reference King James Version, which is my favorite. But nevertheless, here we go. So beginning, he says in the third chapter, he says, in the same way. Now, what does he mean by in the same way? In the second chapter, he talked about relationships. Now, again, last week I talked about how the, the culture and the society uh, in the place at that time when the uh, when First Peter was written, uh, slavery was in play in that particular country and nation. So, and he addressed the relationship uh, in that particular time in that situation. So, if we bring it into our culture and time now, where there is not slavery being practiced, but that what is close to it or akin to it is the employee and the employer relationship. And in that relationship, he laid out some ground rules to help us on how we are to live and to walk and to do, to, uh, to exemplify uh, Christianity or this lifestyle of Jesus Christ. So with that said, he laid out some things. He says, uh, household slaves in that second ch chapter, uh, 18 verse, it says, uh, submit yourselves, submit to your masters with all reverence, not only to the good and gentle, but uh, ones, uh, but gentle ones, but also to the cruel, meaning that, you know, he wanted those who were in a subservient position, if they were believers, to submit themselves, whether uh, your, your uh, people that you were, uh, working for that they would be mean or bad. And sometimes we find that same situation in employee and employer situation. Sometimes we can have management or that direct manager over that's mean to us. And sometimes they're good. So regardless uh, as to what you have over you, you as a believer are expected to behave a certain way. So with that said, now let's go into the third chapter, the first verse. He says, in the same way, from CSB, wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands so that if some disobey the word, they may be won over without a word by the way their wives live when they observe your pure, reverent lives. Now, I happen to have my wife here. <laughs> who's going to really, really help me in regards to this here. Now, Paul, excuse me, not Paul, but Peter here is talking about the wives. I don't know if, you know, men, if we realize the importance the wife has, 
not only in the household and in the operation or uh, with our children and all, but in us living a life for the Lord. Women play an important, a very important role. So we're going to delve into it a little bit more, but he begins by saying that the wives are to submit themselves to their own husbands. Now, we kind of talked about this a little bit earlier in that the world has their definition of submission mm -hmm. and the Bible has its way of defining submission for the wives. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. help the audience in referring to or helping them better understand the submission that the word of God is talking about for the wives. Mm, I had to think about that. <laughs> but I don't know. I, th uh, I think um, sometimes if you have disagreement, you know, the man has an opinion and the woman has an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, I think the man should uh, listen to his wife. But at the end of the day, if he feel that, um, you know, we're going to do it this way, his way, I think she should pull back and just l let it go ahead and go with him because he is the head of the household uh -huh. and just go with it. But she did voice her opinion okay. that I don't think maybe you should do that. <laughs> okay. And we're going to see that because we as men, we must be able to listen. Yeah. And, and I think hear, that's one of the hardest things for men. I will agree. I, I will agree. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Sometimes, because I tell you sometimes, because I think sometimes you don't listen. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And and we it, it it behooves us as men that we must be able to listen to our wives and hear what they have to say. Mm -hmm. The Bible records, and it talks about even in the Old Testament, that Eve was a helpmeet. So this is a part of of the helping process or the help that men need when it comes to making, excuse me, decisions and things in regards to the family. So I have a question. Yes, ma'am. What, yes, what make y'all make men not hear women? What makes oh you what, that? <laughs> what makes? I mean, because they're running their mouth now. They're moving their lips and their tongue is talking. <laughs> so uh -huh. what? What? What is it that they? Because a woman usually is, I mean, she's functioning. She's she's doing her part as a help me. You know, most women are, unless that man has over time silenced her mm -hmm. to the point of, you know what, we're just going to let him bump his head because right. I'm not going to say nothing. So the woman, I know I'm going to get a whole lot of help from women today. I got you, B. I got y'all. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so women are talking, yes. but what makes men not listen? That's the, that's the question. Okay. A few things, I think. One, it has to do with our upbringing. Um, and you may wonder, well, why, why? Uh, you know, and you have to understand, there are a lot of outside forces that have sometimes helped shape us. Outside forces such as television, what we see on television, what we hear in songs, uh, music, things of that nature. And then sometimes our entire environment, it, they, they sometimes play a role in us, uh, you know, try, grooming us in a way in which, you know, it says, well, the, the man, head of the household, okay? We think the head of the household, that's it. That, you know, that we are the end of it, the be all and end all and, and all like that. And a lot of times we want to go solo because sometimes that pride thing kicks in. Mm -hmm. uh, we want to be proud. We want to not uh, listen and think that we can do it all. And really, we can't. You know, they say behind every good man is a good woman. Well, I'd like to even go a little <laughs> bit further. Don't be behind me. Be right beside me. Yes, <laughs> Yeah, that's seriously. A, yeah, I mean, well, and, well, beside every good man, there you go. Is a good wife. Now it, it's 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 hard sometimes for men to come to that conclusion again because of these outside forces that are helping influence us mm -hmm. sometimes. And I will say, um, growing up, it, it even with a child, it takes them a minute before they comprehend that you know what, my mama got good sense. I need to be listening to her. Mm -hmm. And I remember coming to a reality. Uh, with my mother, then you bump your head several times, yeah. and then when she tell you don't do this, don't do that, and True. then you go, then your mind go, you know what? 
I better listen to her. She, she, she's been telling me the truth for several times now. <laughs> and that's the same thing with a relationship. Yes. And it, again, a relationship between a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. That's why it, it is, you know, we, we grow up together, so to say, and we learn each other. But it, it, you know, I would say that over the years, as time go by, that should be more of the husband's uh, decision-making process to hear the opinion of the wife, to help her, you know, feel not only included, but that she is a part of the family. Mm -hmm. And it's important. Well, and back to your question on uh, why is be subject to your husband, the believer in the kingdom of God, his standard, his way, I would just believe is not that she needs to just uh, not voice her mm -hmm. opinion. It's just at the end of the day, uh, let him just go ahead, whatever conclusion he comes to. Okay. We, sometimes we just got to roll with it. You got to, got to roll with it. Okay. And we should take whatever happens. <laughs> if we're gonna, if we make the decision, like I told you so. <laughs> no, don't do that. I told you. But if we make the decision, mm -hmm. that mean, and like you said, we got to roll with it mm -hmm. and everything. So we have to be prepared for whatever comes behind that decision. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. All right. Let's go on a little bit more here. He <laughs> says, in the same way, why <laughs> submit yourselves to your own husband, so that uh, even if some disobey the word again, he is referring to and talking about the influence of a godly wife having upon a husband. And it seems as though, as he's talking about here, the husband may not be as committed to the Lord and may not know the Lord as the wife does, but he's saying here, the wife has influence, that it is her, her interactions and the things how she conduct herself in the household and in the home, how she uh, you know does these things that will influence her husband not only to be a better husband, but to be a, a better man when it comes to the things of God. But let's go on here. He says that, uh, that they may be won over. Of course, every woman and every, you know, I, I think of it like this. Yes, I serve in the office of pastor, but I must pastor those in my own household first before I can pastor and lead anyone else outside of the, the domain, so to say, in the home of my that I have. Same thing with women. Women must be able, uh, women, wives, must be able to influence their own husbands before they're able to influence others. And I think um, some marriages uh, have failed with some women because they have listened to some of their friends uh, who were ungodly who gave them ungodly counsel mm -hmm. and they listened to them and they were not able to win their husbands over by maybe just being quiet. Mm -hmm. Just, just now, simply just, okay. Okay. And, and just still showing love beyond that, beyond that, which is hard to do. Now in the book of Romans, I think it's 12th chapter. It talks about renewing our minds. Mm -hmm. Let's just say a young lady has grown up in a situation where single parent home, the mother's leading the family. The mother not only goes out and get the bacon, but the mother brings it home and cooks. Mm -hmm. The mother does all of this. And the young lady, when she looks in her family lineage, she looks at her grandmother. The grandmother was a single parent, mm -hmm. led a household. She looked at her aunts, the same thing. And she will even look in her own community where single women are leading the home. Mm -hmm. And in those environments, it is not uncommon to hear it said, don't let a man tell you what to do. Yeah. And it, it, it influences yeah. her. It influences yeah. her. So now when she comes to the Lord and accepts Jesus Christ, the Lord in her life, she needs to understand as well as the, the male. Mm -hmm. And we're not leaving out men as well because there are some negative influences in the community that men are brought up under as well. Mm -hmm. And their mind has to be renewed as well, but she has to understand, just like the men, the authority mm -hmm. that God has placed in the order of the family. That, that there is an order, yes. and there's a flow of authority that God is first, and his word, everything mm -hmm. for, and, if, and the, the, the order of the family is the husband, mm -hmm. the wife, and it disseminates to the children. Yes. Yes. She has to learn the, the kingdom of God system, <laughs> mm -hmm. whereas 
she has learned the world system's yes. way. And what's about to happen when that young lady get married and she's seen 15 strong women uh -huh. in her family. So her marriage is about to be ruined and she's going to be number 16 to somebody <laughs> else. <laughs> and it's because she could not, she wouldn't put in the time to learn God's way. God's way. And again, I, th I think the same thing with men. men we, we need to understand the way uh, of, of how God has set up the family and the role of authority in the family. And once we get it God's way, mm -hmm. everything will work out fine. Yeah, She won't be number 16. No, she won't be number 16. And we're talking about women right now, but yeah. I'm going to get off into <laughs> men. Yes, we will. Oh, yes, we will. <laughs> men are not exempt. But let's go ahead. He says, I may be won over without a word by the way their wives live when they observe your pure, reverent lives. Don't let your beauty consist of outward things like elaborate hairstyles. What and uh, I am approaching the fourth verse. I'm reading the third of uh, the third chapter. Uh, again, reading out of the CSB version. He says, uh, wearing gold jewelry or fine clothes. He says, but rather... What is inside the heart? Mm -hmm. So the, the 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 real you, your heart, your spirit should be that which is controlling everything else. The way that you act, the way that you talk, your demeanor, and everything. It should be controlled. So again, same thing for men. We're, we're going to get to that. He says, the imperishable, the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. Again, a woman who has a quiet spirit, one that is not boisterous, one that is not over the top, don't get me wrong, I understand personalities, and I understand we all have various and different personalities. But again, when it comes to the family structure, God has ordained that the man lead the family and that the woman, she is uh, next to the man in a supporting role, and ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> ain't you know, I was with. thinking, you know, in verse uh, three, they talked about uh, the be beauty outwardly, mm -hmm. and you find some young, young ladies, uh, you know, uh, men are attracted to the way women dress, well, with their yes. hair, and you know, when we get through getting glammed up, you know, yeah. they, visual creatures we are. Yes, <laughs> but then in a way, you know, if a man isn't looking beyond that he can run into something because he's t telling us to you know you could just be dressed up and see sometimes me and just go just oh she's so fine she this, this. but it's got you gotta look look deeper look beyond the beauty yeah <laughs> the and, I, and we know you want and we know you want the beauty but like here you know you're just having the fine jewelry the hair and the clothes and it's together <laughs> But you had told me you're saying once well, somebody told you don't believe the fine. <laughs> That's what I was laughing about. Yeah, they said don't let the fine fool you <laughs> because it can fool you. So to the to the men out there or who are looking for wives, you may want to go a little bit beyond that. A little bit beyond the hair, yeah, and the face and the teeth and. The yeah, every, the yeah. I mean, they can, and nowadays they can really do their face up and put the eyelashes on and the eyebrows and <laughs> hair. The wigs are beautiful now, right? <laughs> and so you can get caught up into all that. But on the inside, mm -hmm. and, and, they can be hideous. <laughs> and wait a minute, Sister Keisha over here, she's, you know, she may be a little plain, but you ain't looking at her. <laughs> but she's the right person. That's awesome. That's awesome. She's, she's, she's the right person. And you know what? You We can take her home and help her. <laughs> oh, yes. So what you're saying is that Same thing for me her too. beauty, her inner beauty <laughs> right. can be matched outside. It can. Lord. <laughs> so you just, let me make sure I get this right. So if they got outer beauty all out of here and everything, and that's together, but on the inside, <laughs> That's a harder job. You don't wish you had a paid attention. That's all I'm saying. Woo, all and that. it's the same thing with the other, with men. You know, sometimes we women just going for, oh, he can't dress. And, you know, look at him. Look at shoes. Look how he is. You know, what if I did that with you? Uh, I would have been single. I would have been single. Yeah. 
Okay, it says the, the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of a great worth in God's sight. For in the past, the holy women who put their hope in God also adorned themselves in this way. They were more concerned with the inside and it making its way outside to beautify them. Let's go. Submitting to their own husbands. And then it gives the example, just as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord or a position of leader. She recognized that. And that's how she interacted with him, not only as her husband, but as her Lord or a leader. Let's go on here. They said, you have become her children when you do what is good and do not fear any intimidation. Mm. When you're able to follow the, ex the example of Sarah, when you're able to you know, follow, support your husband as he executes the plan of God as revealed unto him. You are like a daughter of Sarah here. Husbands, now it's your turn. <laughs> Keep reading. He said, husbands, <laughs> in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way. Now, when I think of the word understanding, we must do that which is necessary to understand. Mm -hmm. Going back to one of the faults of men, listening. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I think that's hard for men. I, it, it is. I, it, I, I, think I will hard. say for some, I can't answer for all, it is sometimes a difficult thing. Because again, you have to understand sometimes, you know, we've been in situations where we just had to make decisions based upon our own knowledge, what we thought, what we felt and all like that. And sometimes, uh, you know, uh, we, we didn't have to consult anyone mm -hmm. on anything. We just did what we felt we wanted to do or needed yeah. to do. And it, but now in a, in a situation where we're married, we have to consider and think about not only will I be affected, but others will be affected by my decision as well. And I think some married men don't get that. It take a long time for them to get that. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they say they love their wife, but they won't listen to her. Uh, I was actually just kind of got, you know, we've been listening to love messages for years. People who are believers have heard of a love message, mm -hmm. but it hit my spirit one day. I was listening to a uh, guy talk on a love. It's, we, we, we really don't have it. I think far it, it, it takes a minute for you to get the God kind of love. We our love sometimes is lined up with the world's love. And because of a, those influences those of the world. Are, yes, and that's all you have seen. That's right. That's all we've seen. And that's what we've been interacting mm -hmm. with. But you we gotta get to a place where the Holy Ghost teach us love. What what love really is. Get to the place, like you said. And that requires one that is one. Hunger and thirst after mm -hmm. righteousness. And submit it to God. And submit it to God. Mm -hmm. Because he, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness or want to understand my ways even better. He said, I have the responsibility to ensure that you get what you want. And they shall be filled. They shall be filled. So husbands, in the same way, live with your wives. Live with them in respect. Live with them in a way in which the, the inner you, the real, the true you, Amen. It, it makes its way out in a pleasant way. Now, again, men, I know that it is easier said than done, but it is something that we must do as men, not only for our wives, but because many of us, we have young men that we're training in our own home. 
And we have young ladies who will be a wife one day as well. So we have to be cognizant of that because we want to set the best example for them. And the best example is to model ourselves after the word. That's, uh, that's, that goes you know, without question. But let's go in here. He says, uh, in, in an understanding way, he says, with a weaker partner, not a, a, a partner that is less than, but weaker. When we talk about weaker physically, yes, my wife is weaker than me physically. And it may be other, you know, mentally or whatever, you know, all any other areas, she just may be. But please know and understand, but there can be another area where this, she's sharper than me. Yeah, she can be sharper than me. But let's go on. But it all works out and evens out in the washes, so to say. He says, showing them honor. Honor. Showing them honor as co-heirs of the grace of life so that your prayers will not be hindered. Mm -hmm. Whenever men, you are coming before God with a petition, seeking him for job advancement, whatever it may be, just know and understand. If you go back to the word, you need to ensure that your wife has been properly honored because it says here, so that your prayers will not be hindered. Yeah, and that's an uh, area too that if somebody is saved, that they need to, a man, he, he needs to, because he is the head. Yes, he is. God is, it's, so if we're talking about order here and God's placed the man as the head, so he has to be careful, as the saying here, not to treat her in a disrespectful way or mm -hmm. like, oh, you nothing or you're this. Christ is not doing that. Not to at us. all. He's, not at he's all. He's over the church. You got Amen. God, Christ, and then, you know, the man. And he's not treating that man that way. That's right. So it's like, why would you treat my your daughter wife. or, yeah, your wife that way when I, being your leader, am not treating, treating you, you that, that way. way? Yeah. Mm. Great. Eighth verse. He says, finally, all of you be like minded and sympathetic. Love one another and be compassionate and humble, not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, giving a blessing. Since you were called for this so that you may inherit a blessing. We always want to inherit a blessing or get a blessing. <laughs> so he tells us how it is done. Oh, yeah. Amen. Let's go on 10th verse. He says, for the one who wants to love life and to see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil. He says, and his lips from speaking lies or deceit. And let him turn away from evil and do what is good. Let him seek peace. Not only peace with God, but peace with his wife and his household and his family. And then pursue it, go after it. Because, this is the part. Because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to whose prayer? Their prayer. The one who is righteous. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm thinking of someone, you know, some women are married to men who are not saved. And, you know, if they continue to do right, it, hey, listen, God is listening. Mm -hmm. His eyes is open to the righteous. Yes. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. Be and even to that man that's saved, Yes. And don't treat his wife. Be careful because a lot of times women are more spiritual than men. And, and yeah, that and I and in I, many cases, not all the time, but, but in many cases. Yes, in many cases you're you're accurate um uh, in everything with that. Mm -hmm. But let me finish this up. The twelfth verse. He says, um uh, ears are open uh to their prayer. He says, But the face of the Lord is against those who do what is evil. Mm -hmm. If the individual is going to do the things that are evil. Please know the face of the Lord, meaning his attention is against those who mm -hmm. do evil. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on to here. Now, he, Peter Gear gets into uh, this area and it's, it, the topic of it has to do with undeserved uh, suffering. He says, who then will harm you if you are devoted to what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness or right standing, he says, you are blessed. 
Now that seems counterproductive. <laughs> yeah, because most people don't, they feel like nothing bad is coming their way if they've been doing, <laughs> if they're doing right. Yes, nobody wants to suffer. But nobody wants to go to jail. Nobody Paul wants. Paul and Peter went to jail. <laughs> yes, nobody wants to have to deal with something that is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to deal with it. But let's go in here. Let's go in here. See what he said. He says, "But even if you are, uh, even if you should suffer for righteousness, you are blessed or empowered to prosper." He says, "Do not fear what they fear or be intimidated, but in your hearts." Regard Christ the Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. I submit unto you the only way in which you are going to be able to give a reason for the hope that is in you. You must have done your due diligence and aforementioned work to get it in here. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against thee. They, and and if, you, if you could imagine our culture and our society getting to a place where we are no longer afforded or have the right to express ourselves as believers in the gospel, if they were to take away our Bibles, if they were to forbid us from going to church, if they were for to, to forbid us, when I say they, the powers, the governmental powers that be, if, 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 hypothetically speaking, if we, they were to do all of these things, would you be able to yet and still rejoice? Would you yet and still be able to give God glory and honor? I mean, because it, 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 it is a question that must be asked because there are certain parts on this globe, this world of ours, that people are dealing with things just like that now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like that now. I think us and, you know, we in the United States, we do have it good. And we, we can't get even comfortable. imagine it. We can't imagine it. And you know what? We do everything we can to prevent it from anything causing suffering to us. <laughs> And you, you know, we were talking about that yeah, earlier. Yeah, we're talking about it early. In that, Jesus has already spoken and said that just because you name the name of Christ, you can expect some type of suffering. Yeah. 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 He said it. Mm -hmm. it and, and he even also said, this is another thing Jesus said, not one tittle or jot is going to pass away from the word that he said. So if he said it, that means it will happen to a degree. Yeah. Now I don't know if, if you know, if uh, it, it'll get that bad while I'm yet living, or uh, you know, the next generation of my sons, my daughters, and even I, I don't know and everything. But we must begin to get ourselves uh, mindset so that when persecution or you know suffering comes, because Jesus said it's going to come. We we got a glimpse that was possible just a little bit. We've gone through something that we've never gone through before. Uh, you know, uh, it's, we, it's, we see possibilities now. Yes. It opens <laughs> up our eyes yeah. for possibilities. Yeah. And we don't know what generation is going to be the generation that goes through revelation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, we don't know. As I always say, no one wants to sign up <laughs> for revelations. Yeah. Oh, especially Sign me up for the Great Tribulation. <laughs> uh, the Rapture, a fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, oh Lord, did you sign me up for this? Yeah. And so no one wants to. But you, but the body of Christ Excuse needs me. to be prepared for whatever time we're in. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. With it. He says here, <clears throat> do not fear what they fear or be intimidated, but in your hearts regard Christ the Lord as holy ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that when you are accused, those who discourage your good conduct in Christ will be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good if 
that should be God's will than for doing evil. Yeah, if you have to suffer for doing good, if that is God's will for you. Mm -hmm. But let's go on here, 18 verse. For Christ also suffered or put up with some things. I was put in a very uncomfortable position for sins once for all. Jesus Christ was put in a very, very, not only uncomfortable, but painful position for all. Mm -hmm. He paid the penalty. He paid the price for sin for everyone. The stripes on his back, the 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 spear or the the that with the hole was made within his side. The seventy-two thorns. Yes, the head. thorns on his head. Yeah, and, of, and the slaps across yes, his face, and the whipping of his beard yeah. away. You know, from his feet. All of these things. He, you know, when he was in the garden. He could have tried to escape this suffering, yes, because he knew what what was about to come go down. Mm -hmm. And like with us, you know, believers, we know we we, we can kind of <laughs> we can kind of guess what can go down if yes. if if you know things pop off. We we know, <laughs> but Jesus went through it. I think that we may have gotten ourselves the church, the modern day American church gotten ourselves to a place of comfortableness and we're asleep. Did the prosperity message get us there? I don't know. Did, <laughs> did, did the comfortableness? Did, made it extra comfortable because mm -hmm. uh, many, there are many people that have repented for their part mm -hmm. in that. So I don't know the fullness of that but did that prosperity message get us to an entitlement? Ooh, to uh, make us feel <laughs> entitled mm -hmm. and that we should not have to suffer. Yeah. Interesting. It says, for Christ also suffered for sins once for all. The righteous for the unrighteous. The innocent for the guilty. <laughs> The one who knew no sin for those who lived and operated and perpetuated a lifestyle of sin. He says that it might bring you to God. The purpose of it all, the reason he went through all of this, that he might bring you to God. Mm -hmm. Now, some things about that. You know, remember Moses wanted to see God. Even though Moses was God's called man at the time, God still would not let him see him in his glory, in the fullness of his glory. Mm -hmm. Moses was put in a cleft or in a rock, and the hand of God was kind of like over his face while he passed by and told, you will be able to see my hinder part, Moses. That's what, that's what you'll be able to see. And what it was, when we really think about it, Moses was born, you know, after Adam's sin. So therefore, the sin nature was getting still prevalent in man. Sin cannot get into God's presence because of the glory and everything where sin is just totally consumed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even though Moses was his man, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. Moses was his man in everything. So he's saying here that Christ made it such that we can come before him. Because we're in him. Mm -hmm. And that whole sin thing is washed away mm -hmm. by the blood of Jesus. We've been made right mm -hmm. in his sight. Because you know what? There's a, <clears throat> a difference between, between repentance and remit, remitted. You know, when we come to Christ, our sins are remitted, taken away. But then when we mess up, we come in repentance. Then it's cleansed. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Amen. But let's go on here. He says that he might bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive by the spirit in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison who in the past were disobedient. 
Now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just going to throw out a little uh, advertisement here. My son is doing a podcast, and the podcast that is coming up, the one of the uh, episodes that they are going to be working on is talking about these spirits that were put into prison that were in the past disobedient unto God. I encourage you. What is it called again? Paradigm switch. <laughs> Got to get it. Got to get it. So here he's talking about, amen, proclamation. He says, in which he also went and made proclamation to the spirits in prison who were uh, in the past were disobedient. When God patiently waited in the days of Noah, while the dark, uh, excuse me, not dark, <laughs> the ark was being prepared. He says, in it a few, that is eight people were saved through water. I, I want to pause there for a moment. I had a note uh, in ref, well, uh, let me go on and finish the 22nd verse. T baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but the pledge of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and power subject to him. Really quick, I, I going back to uh, what we've kind of talked about, and that is the, the suffering. Let's look at something here. Go to Mark 8 and 31. I'm going to go to the King James Version. Uh, Mark 8 and 31. Eight and thirty-one. Yes, Mark eight and thirty-one. And he began to teach them that the Son must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. I, I mean, I'm going to read that again. Here it is talking about his suffering. And he began to teach them, prepare his disciples, get them ready. He says that the son of man must suffer, put up with, go through many things and be rejected of the elders. No one likes rejection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he was going to be rejected, rejected by the religious system or those who were leaders in the uh, the, the Jewish synagogue, those elders, they rejected him. The Bible even talked about it. I think it was last week we even talked about talking about uh, the chief uh, cornerstone or the stone that was rejected by the builders. They rejected him and he became the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. He says, uh, mis, uh, rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes. So we're talking various and different groups and echelons of leadership that was there. He says, and be killed. And after three days, rise again. And he spake the and he spake that saying openly. And Peter took him, and began to rebuke him. But when he had turned about and looked on his disciples, he rebuked Peter, saying, "Get thee behind me, Satan, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but the things that be of men." Peter, at that time, did not understand. Mm -hmm. Peter didn't understand. It is my personal feelings that Peter was enjoying not only the relationship, but the fellowship, and enjoy seeing all the great things that Jesus had done, and probably in his mind, more to come. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now he's, Jesus is talking about leaving us. He's talking about death. It, that's, you know, he just began to focus on those things. And Peter put, no, man, we cannot have this. We can't let this go on. We, we, no. And the great thing about Jesus had to stay focused, didn't he? Had to stay focused. <laughs> he had to stay focused. If he wanted to be popular among men, he would have let Peter do what Peter wanted to do. And no doubt Peter would have been ready to raise an army to defend Christ so that he would not have gone through the very things that he mentioned he would have gone through. And Jesus would have been changing the course changing. of what he was supposed to do. <laughs> he, he could not change it because God had already spoken. Mm -hmm. Or what he wanted. <laughs> what he wanted and what he was going to do. But let's go on here uh, a little bit more. Um, so we finished up now the third chapter and we are about to go, we're getting ready to go into the fourth chapter. He says, therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, 
Arm yourselves also with the same understanding. Get your perspective and get your attitude and your mindset in alignment with what has been said and know that as a believer, you just may have to put up with some suffering and some persecution. Get yourself ready. Get yourself mentally prepared. You know, just like these guys who are, you know, preparing for this NFL playoff game that is coming up this weekend. It is right now and even before that, this day rather, that they have been getting themselves mentally prepared for the game that is coming up on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And this is what he's referring to and talking about, that as believers, get your attitude and your mindset together that you just may have to do some suffering down the line. <laughs> yeah. You just may have to you do may, it. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to run from it, stick your head in the ground, and, and in the sand, rather, because, you know, when you do that, you uh, give the enemy a, a very enticing target. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think last week we even talked about being pilgrims. Travelers. And, yeah, you have to get that mindset, what is your, what is your mission, you know? Mm -hmm. Getting it, yeah. Pilgrims traveling, everyone has that mission. But let's go on here. He says, therefore, since Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves also with the same understanding, because the one who suffers in the flesh is finished with sin. Talking about Jesus, he, he suffered in his flesh with sin. In order to live the remaining time in the flesh, no longer for human desire, but for God's will. For there has already been enough time spent in doing what the Gentiles choose to do, carrying on in unrestrained behavior, evil desires, drunkenness, orgies, carousing, and lawlessness idolatry that are surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living. <laughs> <laughs> and they slander you. Again, we, we, it, it, is, it is incumbent upon us as believers to really understand what he's saying here. A few things. One, there is a difference between the righteous and the unrighteous. You might as well get that in your mind. G get it in your <laughs> mind. The two cannot mix. Yeah. And there is no emotion agent for sin. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, remember we kind of talked, we talked about this in an earlier session or another time. I think it might have been in the marriage session uh, where I talked to the young couple about oil and water that they don't mix, but egg is an emotion or it is an agent that is capable of bringing both together. Mm -hmm. Sin and uh, righteousness, they are never going to be able to come together. We got two different leaders. Two different leaders, two different worlds, two different, two yeah, different everything. Yeah. When you <laughs> when you signed up for the kingdom of God, you actually signed up for Jesus to be your Lord. And be your Lord. And I think a lot of times people they don't get it <laughs> what they signed up for. Uh huh. <laughs> so what do I look like? I, I ain't gonna go down there. <laughs> you know. I ain't gonna go down there. But, but <laughs> there's a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. But let's go on here. Fourth verse of that fourth chapter says, They are surprised that you don't join them in the same flood of wild living, and they slander you. They would even be more surprised if you joined them <laughs> in their flood of wild living. Yeah. God understands. Yeah. Yeah. Give me that clear liquor. Yeah. <laughs> give me that brown. Yeah. yeah. God understands. I'm only human. So what what <laughs> does a person like that that does insist on not changing think of a scripture like this? I don't know what they think. Do they tear that page out? <laughs> I don't know. What do you do? You if do they that? were to tear the page out. 
that still does not justify it. Yeah, I mean, we know that, but apparently yeah. there's many out there that they skip over scriptures like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you're right, you're accurate. They skip over this because it challenges them mm -hmm. as to where they are. Mm -hmm. It challenges them. And again, it puts them in an uncomfortable position and people don't like being in an uncomfortable position. Because, I mean, you think about that fourth verse is clear. He says, uh, wherein they think it's strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot speaking evil of you. That is clear that you're not supposed to be. <laughs> and <laughs> yes, you're right. It is clear that you're not supposed to be. And it is as if he's saying when they are able to speak evil of you because you didn't run with them and do the same that they did, bless you. Yes. Get your badge. Yeah. But we don't want them to speak evil of us, so we're going. Uh -uh. We want to be popular. We don't want to be the odd man out, so to say. Yeah. Let's go on here. He says, they will give an account to the one who stands ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason, the gospel was also preached to those who are now dead. So that although they might be judged in the flesh according to human standards, he says they might live in the spirit according to God's standard, giving them another chance or an opportunity. Seventh verse. He says the end of all things is near. And again, he's talking about the, the end of all things is near. There was something that I had come about. Uh, oh, there was a, a note um, that I, come, let's go on here a little bit more. He says, um, oh, verse. the seventh verse of that fourth chapter. He says, uh, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober-minded for prayer. Above all, maintain constant love for one another since love covers a multitude of sin. Again, Peter is talking to the church, to the body of believers. He's saying here, above all, maintain constant love, not periodic love, but constant love for one another, since love covers a multitude of sin. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. Just as each one has received a gift, use it to serve others. So whatever your gifting is from God, use that gifting to serve others in the body of Christ. That is awesome to think about. Everybody's not going to have the same gifting. Mm -hmm. But what gifting one has can be used to serve the body of Christ. To kind of help people understand it, at Living Epistle, we have some guys uh, that are electrical engineers or electric, electricians, that's it, electricians. Believe it or not, their gifting in that field of electricity, it is a gifting that folks can use. Mm -hmm. It could be an asset to the body of Christ. <laughs> an asset to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. My computer skills, mm -hmm. asset to the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. My son, Our son's video editing and recording and all of those, those skills, mm -hmm. an asset to the body of Christ. Yeah. You know, our, our oldest son, his, his bass playing, his drum playing, everything that he does for the body of Christ, that gifting that God... It is an asset to the body of Christ. And, you know, I was thinking, what a shame uh, when one goes to church and they just want to eat and not play a part and assist and aid in the buildup of the kingdom of God. And someone out there is in need of that gifting. Yeah, of their gift. <laughs> it's amazing. It that's, is. That's amazing. You got even, I mean, like with the big mega church, you got all those people there that are saying they say, and they say majority of 97% go home and never will help at all mm -hmm. to build the kingdom of God. And most of them are not into help spreading the gospel. They want to be served rather than wanting to serve. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. That is, that is interesting and so amazing. He says, just as each one has, a, has received a gift, use it to serve others as good stewards. A good steward is an individual that knows and they, they have great knowledge of what they have and they use it wisely. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) That's what a good steward is. Yeah. They use it wisely. They don't use it frivolously. They did I say the word right? I think you got it. Yeah. (laughs) They don't use it irresponsibly. They use it, amen, in a wise manner. He says, as good stewards of the varied grace or unmerited favor of God, if anyone speaks, let it be as one who speaks God's word. He says, if anyone serves, let it be from the strength God provides so that God may be glorified through Jesus Christ in everything, in everything. Because again, we want to glorify him in everything, you know, Uh even, (laughs) you know, we jokingly and, you know, I, I know y'all serious, especially you Mm -hmm. sometimes is that my gifting is not singing. But <laughs> that what I can do, mm-hmm. I do it to the glory of Jesus Christ. I give it a good shot, don't I? I'm <laughs> I give to it. Be a, nice. I, I, I give it a good effort. I know, I know, I, I know. I, 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 you know, sometimes I'm on key, but more so off. I understand that, and I know that. But the Bible also says, make a joyful noise. <laughs> But he said, glory through Jesus Christ in everything. He says to him, be glory and the power forever. Amen. I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and hold it right here. We're going to put a marker right here and we're going to come back next week. Amen. And begin here in this fourth chapter at the 12th verse. I just want to take this time to thank you for allowing us to come into your homes and places where you are and share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ through our living epistle live uh, Bible study every Wednesday night. It's only for one hour, 7.30 to 8.30. Amen. We want to extend a warm welcome to you to come back again and join us for our Sunday morning worship, which takes place at 11 a.m. here at Living Epistle Facebook Live as well. Amen. If you want to support Living Epistle, we would gladly amen, accept any gift uh, that you would like to help us and support us here. Amen. And he should be flashing something across the screen to let you know the platforms that you can support us. And ask that whichever one that you choose to support us with, make sure that you uh, see the Living Epistle logo, which is there to, amen, ensure that you are at the right place. We thank God for you and we thank God for what he's doing in your lives. And at this time, before we get ready to get off the air, I want to pray because our country has gone through, amen, a momentous day today. We have new leadership in our country, and we want to pray over them, amen, that they will do the things that are necessary so that we can live a peaceful life. So I'm going to close this session with a word of prayer, not only, amen, for us, but also, amen, for the nation. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, for this day and this time that you have blessed us to see and to be here. God, at this time, I intercede for the leaders that we have in this great nation of ours. You see the responsibility. You see the individuals. You see their hearts, and you know what they are up against. And Father, I pray for them that you would lead them, that you would guide them, and that you would help them make the right decisions so that we all can live a peaceable life here. Father, I love this country. I love this great nation of ours. And God, I intercede for the leadership, God, in our governmental system that we have. And Father, I bless you and I thank you for it all. And I ask this prayer in Jesus' mighty name. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Amen. And until next time, God bless you.